Oh, hey guys. What you doing there? So, guess you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm picking off the little bitty pieces of this circuit board. So this is the open extruder printed circuit board made on the OSD. For the first time ever, I completed a whole circuit board. The interesting thing is, is that me and Bob from Making Stuff YouTube channel, we decided to do something a little fun. We decided to swap content. We both are making the same thing. He's doing toner transfer, he's working on the software. I don't exactly know what his video is gonna be about, but you're gonna watch it right here, right now. And if you wanna see my video, you actually have to go over to his channel. All the links are in the description. Just thought we'd try something a little different today. Hey everybody, it's Bob here from the Making Stuff channel, and I just want to say it's an honor to be on the RWG Research channel. Thanks for us, thanks for letting me appear so I can show everybody this. What is it you, you ask? It is the open source extruder circuit board. Now, as you know, Russ and I have been working on this for quite some time, and he has made a circuit board using his 3D printer where he cut the circuit board out uh, on some copper clad. Well, I don't have a 3D printer that can cut circuit boards out, so I had to do this one with the toner transfer method. So I don't know if you guys can see that or not. So this was done with the old fashioned toner transfer method. I've got the parts all soldered on here and this has been hooked up, tested, it's ready to go. So let me hook this up and then we can walk through the software together. Okay, so I've got this board all set up and it's ready to go. Let me give you a quick overview. There's an up and a down, a left and a right, and an inner button. These two here on the side are reset and pause. There's the A4988 stepper driver, an LCD, a potentiometer that adjusts the contrast of the LCD. There's two voltage regulators, one for all the components on the board. There's another one for the calipers, and the reason for that is the calipers are 1.5 volt, so we had to have a separate regulator for those. And then this uh, little bit of uh, transistors and capacitors and resistors, that is the code that converts the data coming from the calipers into something that the Teensy can read. And of course, we've got the Teensy here. And on this board, I'm using a Teensy LC. The LC stands for low cost. And it's only maybe a few dollars more than an Arduino board, uh, but you get so much more with it. It's To me, it's worth it just to upgrade to a Teensy. And then they do even have more expensive Teensies, uh, like a 3.1 or a 3.2, and those run about double what an Arduino like this would cost, but those have even more processing power. They've got more uh, RAM and more I.O. And for, for this project, that would work. You could, you could pop one of those in here and load the code and it would run just fine, but I'm using the LC. This is the, I would say, the minimum you would need to run this project. Okay, so let me power on the board here and we will go through the menu. And first of all, the, the board, the way you navigate through this, you use the left and the right buttons to go through the menu. And you see as I hit the left and the right button, it goes through all of the different settings that can be set on this board. And then when you enter one of these modes or a setting and you wanna change it, you use the up and the down button. Once you've changed a setting, you save it by hitting the enter button and that saves uh, all of your settings to the EEPROM on the Teensy. So once you set something, it's set and you don't have to reset it every time the board power cycles. So I'm gonna start out showing you guys about the automatic mode. When I hit the enter button, it enters the automatic mode. You can see the cursor here flashing. And you can either start or stop the automatic mode. So we're gonna start it, and you start it by hitting the up button. And you see it says start. 
and I'll hit enter. Now the motor has started turning and you can see the screen has changed. Now this first reading here, this 0, 0.00, that's the reading coming off the calipers. Now these readings coming in are multiplied by 100. So if that said 1.00, that would be 0 0.01 millimeters. And the reason why I had to do that was to get the measurements to work with the PID algorithm and I had to multiply everything by 100. Now, also, this, is, this isn't the final version. There's going to be several revisions. This may be fixed in future revisions. I, I don't know. I, I can't really say at this point in time what all we're going to add and take out and change. But like I said, this is just the beginning. This is enough to get this project started where we can test it out. So next is this value here, this 255. This is the value that the PID algorithm is trying to change the speed of the stepper motor. The PID library that we're using for this has a value between 0 and 255. So right now it's maxed out trying to change the filament size because it thinks the filament uh, running through the machine, which of course there's no filament running through the machine, that's what says 0. So it, it's trying to correct for uh, a situation that doesn't really exist. Now. The bottom numbers here on the second row, this 1, the 0.1, the 0.90, that's the PID settings and I've got those on there just for uh, a debug for me so I can tweak this software and I can see what the settings are and how this behaves when I change the settings. So now I'm going to just manually grab the calipers here and change the value. Okay, so you can see it says 236, so that's 2.36 millimeters. And you can see this number here is slowly going down. So what it's doing now is it thinks the filament is too big, so it's speeding up the rollers so it can stretch that filament out thinner. Now I'm going to lower it here. Alright, so now it's 1.54 millimeters and you can see the numbers going up. It's trying to slow down and compress that filament to make it thicker. And that's how the, the PID algorithm works. And it, it also, it doesn't go just by size, it goes by time too. So if the reading changes a whole lot over a quick amount of time, it's going to adjust this number quickly and if it changes slowly, over an amount of time, the number is going to change slowly. So you can see now it's kind of changing maybe four or five times before this uh, number, before the decimal point changes. So I'm going to just change it real fast. So you can see the number just jumped up to zero and now I'm going to let go of the calipers and let it go down to a low number here and you'll see it will rapidly change to 255. So that's the PID algorithm at work, and that's used in the automatic mode. Now to stop the automatic mode, we hit the enter button, then we hit the down button. Oops, I guess it would help to stay on the automatic mode. There we go. So we hit the down button, we tell it to stop, and now it has stopped. And the reason why we do that is because we want to be able to change some of these other settings on the fly while it's running. So you have to tell it to start and stop automatic mode. Just entering the automatic mode doesn't automatically start or stop it. Now next in the menu is the auto speed set. Now this is right now just an arbitrary number that sets the start speed of automatic mode. So when you turn it on, it's got to start somewhere, and that's where this starts. And I've got a formula that I will go over more, more detail in in a later video of how we arrive with this number, but all of that's still being worked on, and that's what we're trying to uh, iron out and, and get going right now. Next is manual mode. When you enter manual mode, the rollers automatically start. You can see there's a number here 
and you just change this number with the up and the down button. And this just sets a set speed on the puller roller that doesn't change, it doesn't do anything with the PID algorithm, there's no error correction. This is just so you can start it up and run your extruder and get everything set up and going before you go into automatic mode. Next are the PID parameters. There's a P, the I, and the D, and these are all set the same way. You hit the enter button and you can change the values. And then when you get to a value that you want, you hit the enter and that has saved that value and is in the EEPROM on the Teensy. There's also the PID sample rate. This is a number in milliseconds. Right now it's set to 300 milliseconds. This is how you can change how often the PID algorithm takes a reading and then tries to apply error correction. And 300 milliseconds seems to be a really good uh, default starting point. And it, it's used on a whole bunch of other things if you look at this PID library that comes for the Arduino. I believe the 300 milliseconds is just the default. I don't know why you would want to change it, but the settings in there, we can change it. And so you would do that here with the menu. There's also an alarm min and an alarm max. Now what these are, they are millimeter readings. And this is a feature that will let you set a minimum and a maximum threshold and if the filament exceeds that amount it will set off an alarm which is, right now is just an LED. You can see how the LEDs are lit. So if you have this running and you're making filament and you turn away, if you walk away for a few minutes and you come back, it would be nice to know if your filament went too large or too small because if it goes too large it could possibly jam your printer and if it goes too small or too thin it could not be enough plastic coming out of your printer nozzle to uh, continue to print. And You don't want to have this big roll of filament and not know that hey there might be something wrong with it. So you set these values, the minimum and the maximum value, and then when you're running, we'll go this back in automatic mode, when you're running if your filament exceeds those amounts. If it goes outside of that threshold, it will set off this LED here and the one on the Teensy. So you can see I've set it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this inside that threshold. So I'm close to my target value of 1.75 millimeters. So I'm going to hit the reset and you can see everything's running fine. So if I go over 1.9 or under 1.4, it should turn those LEDs on and off, or not off, but on. There you go. So it jumped up to 209, then we'll go back down. There you go. So now that LED's on, so when I come back, I'll know that I exceeded that threshold and there could be something wrong with that filament that's being made right now. Now, this, the settings that are in the software right now, this is, just, this is just a starting point. Like I said, it could change. Well, I know it's going to change. There'll be some additions, there'll be some bug fixes and things like that. Okay, and there's one other feature I want to show you. And that is the pause button. And when you pause the, uh, the whole process here, you can see it says pause on the menu and the pause LED has lit up. And this is like an emergency stop. What it does is it, it kills power to everything. It kills the power to the stepper motor, uh, the calipers, it stops the whole process. You don't lose any of your settings or anything, but this is a good way just to kind of pause. You can make changes to extruder and then when you're ready to continue, you just hit the pause button again and it will continue on. So this is a good starting point and it's uh, everything we've got in here so far. Uh, this will at least let us get started with working with the software and an extruder together and we can make improvements and 
we can make modifications and, and, and do things with this. And, and like I said, it's a good starting point. And if there's something that you guys would like to see in the software, uh, leave a comment and let us know. So thanks for letting me show you guys this on the RWG Research Channel. This has been an exciting project to work on. We've got a whole lot more coming up. And don't forget, Russ has made a video. And if you want to see it, you got to hop on over to my channel over at Making Stuff. The link's in the description. And while you're there, why don't you hit the subscribe button? Hey, welcome back. Well, like I said, I was just switching content for fun. We thought it'd be fun. So if you want to see my video and me making the circuit board, you're going to have to go to his YouTube channel. Links are in the description. Making stuff channel. Pretty cool stuff, actually. So he's the one who actually worked on the software after I failed miserably to try. And um, he designed the, uh, the circuit to a point, and then I finished it. Uh, and then I made up the circuit board, and then he built one and uh, as you saw in this video it's working pretty well so go check out uh, go check out my video if you want to see mine working because right now this is what it looks like okay peace out have a good one bye